All right, boys, girls, to choose. Blind man Dan's poor sight. Poor bastards running into objects in the broad daylight. Fuck. Blind man Dan's now live. This is a hazard. So nuts, sacks and front cracks, listen up, enjoy the ride. And welcome back to another episode of the Blind Man Dan podcast. Coming to you live from Early Beast, I'm on the top floor of the Coral Sea Vista Resort, and I have Dasha beside me. Dasha, how are we going? I'm doing very well. Am I pronouncing your name right, Dasha? Dasha, yes. You can't really fuck it up. It's D A R S H A. Aussies called me Dasha, like the reindeer. For some reason, they pronounce their R's at the end of the word instead of in the middle. That's definitely the wrong Aussies. <laughs> Yeah, don't hang around those Aussies so anymore. It's D-A-R-S-H-A, if you don't know me, Dasha Sai on Instagram. Yeah, get amongst it. Wrap your eyes on it, guys. She's uh, very spiritual and connected to the world from what I've gathered so far. <laughs> <laughs> so today's episode, we decided we're going to talk about uh, dating. The new age dating thing. in this uh, new day and age. It's friggin', it's a bit of a roller coaster. Isn't it? It's nuts. So how's, how's your dating life? Dan? Oh, what are we gonna start with me? <laughs> uh, Shit. Well, I feel like your dating life would be more exciting than mine. You think? Uh, How do you gather that? <laughs> <laughs> I am just getting to know you, but you you have a little bit of an image. You you, you travel around Australia. You're I travel around Queensland. Yeah. I, I can't see to go any further. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, I... You've got 90 people watching you on our live, as I just have three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dating story has been fucking wild. So, like, I met my wife. I was, I was married to my wife, or together with my wife, about eight years. Um, we've been separated eight years now. And in that time, my ex was lucky enough as we got, we got divorced, and she sort of found Mr. Right nearly straight away. And they've gone on to get married, and they've got an awesome life. Great couple. Uh, very happy for her. And you're happy for her. <laughs> Yeah, I am. I am very, I am very <laughs> happy for it. Right? Very happy for it. Um, me, hasn't hasn't gone that well. Uh, I've had a fair few failed relationships over the years. Um, yes, it, it hasn't been easy at all. And what do you mean by failed relationships? Say, so what's a failure in a relationship? Oh, it's not working out, I guess. Um, so, like, I don't know, when I... When I get to that, that love stage, I, I love hard. I won't deny it. Like, um... Once I give you that I love you word, it's usually unconditional love with me. I'm, I got, you know, I'm hooked. And I probably can say in the last, uh, in that last eight years, I would have been had that love probably three times for someone, and, and it's been fucking brutal when it falls apart. It's, um, but like oh, I got some horror stories. What do we talk about? Fucking. Tin- well, let, wait, wait, let's pause. Pause. Unconditional love. That is a big word. Hundred percent is. And not, it doesn't come from many people, Dan. So no. It's nice to hear you say unconditional love. Oh, did I mention I'm single? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it's that, uh, I don't know, I, I sort of feel um, this day and age that the love word gets thrown around way too easy and love doesn't mean what it used to be anymore. Um, I've been in relationships where they've told me that they love me so much, like, it's, you know, love everything about you, can't fault you, but they have ended the relationship uh, based on my eyes. And that's been... That's fucking hard. That's been. That's probably. I've had two girls pull that on me now, and that has been um, one of the hardest ones to swallow. Yeah. You know, I can I can handle a breakup in the way of, and I used to fucking idiot. I don't like you or something like that. You know, or um, but when it comes down to my eyes, like I, I'm the kind of guy that I'll change anything about myself um, to a degree to to be the best. Like everyone wants to be the best person they can be. So yeah. I'll do. If I'm in a relationship, I'll change anything about myself to be the best partner I can be. Um, but unfortunately, that, that's one thing I can't change. I can't change the fact that I'm losing my eyesight, and I know it's a big thing for people to take on. And I and I'm very upfront when I'm in the dating. Like, um, I tell the girl straight away. I never, I never hide it. Well, fucking th- not that I can. I run into a lot of shit, so they pick up pretty quick. Um, but you know, like I, I, I put it to them. You know, this oh, I am going to go blind one day, so you need to be aware. Prepa- aware of that. You know, and I, I don't date just for oh, let's just date for six months and. You know, have a bit of fun next. I don't. I don't want to date that way. Yeah. You know, I want to just. I want to just be that one person, and accomplish everything I want to do, and build an empire, build a team with someone, 
Um, but yeah, it hasn't worked out that way for me, unfortunately. <laughs> so it's been a bit rough. It's been and a bit how, rough. How unfortunate is it? Like, like you're such a beautiful, amazing soul in that way. You're ambitious. You're you're going for it. You got so much going for you, and the fact that you have conditionally um, have a set challenge in your life. How how not only do you personally have to actually go through <laughs> the healing. <laughs> of that but also to have other people comment or have some kind of say over that i don't think i think that you will meet the right person who will be empowering and supportive yeah. of that and will yeah, well hopefully they hurry up because it's getting fucking dark up <laughs> <laughs> what's this rush why are we all rushing to find the right one right yeah but See, and then we got we got so much pressure on what the right the right one is. Yeah. That we make a we make a checklist. You can just talk normally, darling. You don't have to get don't try and swallow the microphone, eh? <laughs> You're putting it all over the place. Yeah, I'm just trying to get so because you, you keep looking at me. You keep looking at me. That's fine. I don't know if I'm on camera. Or on oh phone. yeah, everywhere. Don't worry about the cameras. <laughs> it's um yeah, and like my mother sort of says that to me a lot. She goes, Daniel, d don't be in such a rush and. To in my, with my circumstances, I do, you know, I do feel like I'm in a little bit of a rush now. Like I haven't found someone yet in the last eight years. I got my daughter up me. Dad, I really want a stepmom. <laughs> like I'm fucking working on it. <laughs> um, but like, you know, there's a lot I want to accomplish, and I want to I want to do that with someone special. Um, so I sort of start and feel like I am maybe getting in that little bit of a rush. Like I want to find someone. I want it to be with the right person too. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't just settle for anything where I have in the past, but I've. I'm blue. I've had enough and heartbreaks now where I've <laughs> tightened up a bit. And isn't that the biggest thing? Is like I feel right now that so many people settling into something just because yes. um, they're searching out of themselves yeah. um, to fill a go hole or a gap or mm -hmm. some kind of thing within themselves through someone else. And this is where I feel there's a little disconnection where we're looking outside of ourselves for that someone, yeah. Rather than actioning and attracting that person on the level, hundred percent. Yeah, know, I'm I very guilty of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so for yeah. me, like yourself, I've been single for a long time, mm. and that means no dating. I don't know if you've dated, but like <laughs> never, never dating. I've been dating, but I can't say it's like even come to being like no status. Yeah, like someone uh, being able to call someone my boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe it's because I entered a relationship when I was only like nineteen, coming to Australia. Yep. And uh, I very much settled into the relationship out of comfort. And um, three years into our relationship, I uh, bought a house in on the Gold so Coast. Much, so and, mature. Y um, you still got that house? <laughs> 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 no, my ex-partner has it, but anyway, so yeah, three years from the age of 19, 21, falling deeply in love or thinking I was loving someone and basically jumping all in um, and then coming to my reality and realizing that everything was pulled from underneath me. And yep. then dealing with three court cases at the age of 22. Oh, Jesus. So I was having someone want to kick me out of the country. Yeah. <laughs> Deport me from this country. Take my property. And so very much had a lot of healing to do from that. That's a long time healing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I finally got my citizenship after 10 oh. years. <laughs> oh. But that's what it... At least now I know you only want me for my body. And <laughs> Yeah, not for your visa. No. I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's um, yeah, I, I've been very guilty of that. I think I've, I've gone into relationships um, thinking it's all going to be good, and I've stayed in them a lot longer than I should have, purely out of comfort, um, and sort of made me just too scared to maybe face it alone, do it alone. And I've, you know, I've had pretty rough relationships where um, my partner was like sort of, well, not sort of, she was like a drug addict and alcoholic. And it was um, a really hard relationship to be in. That lasted about 18 months. Um, she was like constantly having seizures and ended up in hospital. And like I 
you know, thought she died a couple of times to me. Like it, it was very stressful to be in that yeah, relationship. I can and I stayed in that for a very long time. And I stayed in it purely out of, you know, people say, why are you staying there? Why are you doing this? I said, I love her. I love her. And that's it. I can't, I can't give you a reason why. I said, I love her. You know, but um, stayed in that, stayed in a position like that for so long, it, it destroys you as a person. You, you start to lose yourself in a big way. Very much so. Yeah. And then after that one ended, I found that that sort of started it. I kept going sort of from relationship to relationship. And they all sort of turned out in the same sort of way, very stressful to be in. Um, but I just kept, I kept finding myself ending up in those relationships again. And then we just took that break and just trying to find myself. But I felt like I did find, I did feel like I couldn't find my, do, take a break. Because the longer I take a break, the blinder I'm getting. <laughs> and I'm not going to find the, not going to find the one to settle down with. Man, it was a terrible I, approach. But I feel like many people resonate with that, with being with someone and there's some form of self-sabotage. Yeah. Because we feel that maybe we're trying to fix or help or or do or be there for someone who's not loving themselves and not caring themselves. Yeah. And then that starts to trigger us and hurt us. But I think, yeah, that's the thing about relationships is a constant like learning yeah. Right. No, and being you. able to to have these conversations where like, what are we doing here? Is this healthy? Is this toxic? Yeah. But also like, okay, with someone with an addiction problem or or someone who's um, not in the healing state or phase, it's really hard to be there for them because oh, yeah. they're not in a position to help themselves. No. Yeah. And it, and and it's hard to orientate anyone in that space when you don't want to help yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so it's like, okay, you want to be a life coach, you want to be a healer, you want to do good for other people, but you can't change someone. It's like you can lead a horse to water. That's right. You can't teach them how to drink. Yeah, you are a healer. So, so then at some stage in ourselves, in our self-love for ourselves, and that unconditional love for ourselves has to go, okay, this person has the capacity to meet me on this level, yet they're choosing not to. Yeah. So if I continue to be there, I'm actually not helping myself or them. No, yeah. And I actually have found, um, sort of like once I got out of that relationship, you know, I, I became a lot better myself. But so did she. You yeah. know, she started to turn around a bit too. So, you know, sometimes staying in something, you know, thinking that you're helping them, you, you could potentially be holding <coughs> them back from getting better. True. Uh, yeah. True. And that, and then we come back down to unconditional love. What does unconditional love mean to you? What does unconditional love mean to me? Yeah. Um, <coughs> for me, like once I love someone, I love you, and like I'll, I'll move heaven and earth to make sure, you know, you achieve what you want to achieve in life. You, you know, you have everything you want to have. Not so much in the way of material things, but just know that you can 100 percent depend on me. Yeah. So if something goes wrong, I'm there, um, and I'll support. You know support them to get to where they want to be in life if they want you know some sort of business or project they want to do I'll you know try and help with that um, and it also means like in the way of like if they've got children you know like I've, I've dated girls with children and it's been hard because I will take on these children like they are my own so yeah. when the relationship falls apart I'm not just losing the girl I'm losing the kids as well and that's hurt me a lot as well um, and even in like what sort of hit me with the eyes things when they said look I just can't do it because your eyes and I thought well because I love you. They Bitches. Say, I, I say, yeah, <laughs> I'm joking. Fuck you. They say, I love you, but I can't do this because of your eyes. And I would go back with the argument and I said, yeah, I get it. No worries. Like, I'm fucking, I don't want to do it either. You know, I don't, don't, I don't blame you, really. I said, but don't say you love me. Don't say that. I said, because I love you. And if tomorrow, if you got hit by a fucking bus and you end up in a wheelchair for the rest of your life, I'll still love you. I'm not going to leave because you're now in a wheelchair. That's, that's not how I work. You know, like, it's unconditional love. I love you. So... That's what I've noticed more moving, you know, in dating these days. That this love was thrown around, but it's not. It's not backed it's not up. Real. They ba- they can it's bail not on. Genuine. It's like no, it's not genuine. No, they can bail on it very easily. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that comes down to what grade or degree of love we have for ourselves as well, or, mm. or what how we understand unconditional love. So, for me, that as well is really important for me. To me, unconditional love means there's no conditioned love which means there's no ulterior motive to why you love someone. Yeah. And and sometimes that love can be hurt. Unconditional love can really fucking hurt, just saying. It fucking, yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and it does, it hurts. Because you love your parents, you love your family, you love your kids, 
and they can still screw you over. Yeah. They can still fuck you around. Yeah, they can yeah. still tell you shit you don't want to hear. And they don't. It you does. Know what I mean? it's, it, can be, <laughs> it can be fucking and, painful. And and that's what unconditional love is mm. actually like being around people that are like, you know, I want the best for you, but the best for you doesn't mean stick around here and stay with me. Yeah. The best means you go do you and you go live that best life that you're going to do. And maybe in two or three years time, you and I will be in the same space that we can come together but you need to go work on yourself yeah I'm you know what i mean yeah and uh, and sometimes unconditional love it can be hard love it can be hard truth it can oh, be shit, yeah. yeah it is um uh, so so i feel that's that's where we're at right now in the dating world there's this surface level interaction of engagement of searching outside of ourselves to just like match that codependency match that need of wanting something from someone yeah without knowing exactly what it is you need (laughs) you know is it intimacy is it affection is it i want to be emotionally stimulated by someone personally i want to be intellectually stimulated by someone yeah so i i need to like you know how we were talking about that checklist now it's funny because I find like men are very rigid and going like, she's got to fit a certain profile, right? Mm. She's got to be this good looking. She's got to, you know, not smoke. <laughs> Bulk dope. <laughs> Bulk dope. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to that one later. Uh, just FYI, but or she's got a, you know, you got your particular deal breakers, and and sometimes they're so rigid. And mm. they're so like refined because of previous experiences yeah. that they're not allowing us to move into into a space of allow radical acceptance and conditional love. Yeah. Because we are so like, oh, she's got to be like this. I've been told before, get this. And this really pissed me off. <laughs> I've been told by two guys I've dated before, I don't date blonde chicks. Blonde chicks? Yeah. Then why do they start dating you? Good question. <laughs> don't start. This yeah. is my argument don't with the. Don't give me hope. Uh, th- this is my argument with the fucking <laughs> eyes. I don't blind. I don't date blind guys. Well, what'd you start? <laughs> and and it's just such an interesting thing because I'm actually Latina. I come from Central America, Guatemala. I'm I'm I should be dark skin, dark hair. Yeah. But I'm not, <laughs> and I don't have any control. Maybe, or maybe t- someone's lying to you. Where you're from. I don't have any control or choice over that, but fuck, when I actually talk to someone and they're going to tell me, oh, I don't date a girl because she's blonde and white, I'm just like, wow. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I've, um, you know, like even being in this dating scene, meeting different girls on the way last, in the last eight years, it's almost made me pretty ashamed of my fellow men of some of the horror stories I've been told of how, of how they get treated on dates. Um, just how they get treated in general. It like fucking blows me away. I know, right? And <laughs> even when they tell me, oh, my ex beat me up a lot. Um, he's been out of jail, but I'm still there. I'm still there. And, like, I don't know what to fucking do. I don't know whether to shake the girl or shake him. Or It's it's blown me out just how much, how many horror stories I'm hearing of what uh, girls are going through in the way of dating. There's a lot of toxic nature around dating. Um, it's very unfortunate. And I think um, a lot of it's conditional behavior. Um, I see a lot of it here in Australia. It's a different different form of dating or approach or engagement between women and men than it would be in my Latin home country. I'm not saying the one in my country is healthy, <laughs> yeah. but I'm saying it's different. And so as an observer, I am able to see that that there is little things here that that don't appeal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've just noticed, for example, it's like, Apparently, like certain areas here in Australia, like Byron Bay, Gold Coast, even Early Beach, there's more women than men. Yeah. It's six to four. Fuck, I don't do that well on Early Beach. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's quite interesting. There's a lot more women in, in than men in certain areas. Yeah. And like, for example, I'm, I'm a Latina. I come from a Latin background. And... It's all about the, the art of seduction, the way you engage with women, the way you attract them, the way you draw them, the way you talk to them. Yeah. And it's all like this romanticism, like in France, or Italians or so forth. It's like, look you in the eyes, like, 
make references to poetry, make references to something romantic, right? Oh shit, I haven't got that up my sleeve. So, so here in Australia, it's really interesting because you're at a bar and someone will come over and they'll put you down before they put you Yeah, <laughs> nice shoes. They'll be like, oh, like, oh bitch, move out the way, mate. <laughs> no, just, you know what yeah, I that's mean? Not, that's no, not my approach. <laughs> no, it's not, not like that, exactly. Yeah, no, I definitely hear what you're saying there. Um, I find like I still, I'm sort of old school. I like to meet a girl naturally. Like I've met a girl um, on a train last year. It was just like this big explosive love story that lasted four days. And I just thought this is the be on and I found it. Put a fork, oh, put a fork in me, I'm done. It just exploded. Ooh. Just met her on a train. I like that love too sometimes. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> unreal. It was unreal. And then it, it just yeah, fell apart. Um, recently I met a girl um, at the park. I was with the kids and... Yeah, there was this stunner there. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to start talking to her. So I started talking to her. And we just hit it off. It was fine, you know. Exchanged numbers and whatnot. Been chatting a little bit. Um, like, I like, I like, still like meeting girls naturally like that. You yeah. know, I feel like there's way like, more into it. Uh, talking to them. Yeah. Approaching talk, them. But, like, stuff. this um, this social media world out now, or even, like, this dating app world. And what I hate about the dating app is, like, right, so you're on Tinder and you're swiping, all right? And you're purely doing that on looks. You're swiping away. You don't read their profile. You don't read fucking nothing. You look at the picture. Nah, nah, nah. Yo, yeah, nah, nah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I hate that because a person doesn't even get a chance to sell themselves. People don't, they don't get a chance to bloody open their mouth and... You it's know, like sh- it's like now we go on Netflix and literally they don't even have a trial, right? They have three words that says like comedy sassy and something yeah you're like trying to put three words together and make a whole movie yeah <laughs> yeah trial in your own head yeah. about what the movie you're about to watch is but uh, <laughs> so i sort of feel like a lot of poor bosses or a lot of people get girls too yeah a lot of, yeah they, it would guys, no no like, it know? would be a lot a lot of people are getting kicked to the curb um purely because they don't get a chance to even talk you know and you know, like beauty only goes so far. Like you've got to get a lot of, attra- you know, you get a lot of attraction in the personality too. I'm sure, like physical attraction is massive. is very important. I don't get what anyone says. Like people say, look down everything. I, I don't agree. Like it does have to start with physical attraction for it something to work. That's how I, that's how I feel anyway. Um, but like, but yeah, people just they don't even get a chance to get to that point at all to just open their mouth. Like oh, because the if I swap on this one, the next boat could be a little bit hotter. You know, <laughs> so fucking the poor ugly bastards. You know, like. <laughs> Um, I think, yes, I feel that as soon as these apps came out, like Tinder and Bumble and so it, it made relationships more discardable. Yep. So basically, people are not actually willing to sit with themselves and do the work. They're just like, on to the next. So it makes relationships. Yeah. Again, like it makes it's made the dating world yeah. very surface level and very fake. And in in so many different ways, and that it's that it's like, oh, we don't have to deal with what's going on with this relationship with this person because there's so much availability yeah. as to, but is there <laughs> like what comes? Well, like no, because I don't get a fucking match. <laughs> but <laughs> it know? also like it's it's ruining uh, communication. So I'm big on communication. I don't like fighting. Um, I'm not a yeller. I'm not a screamer sort of fighter. Um, I could see your yeah, good communications, I like, man. I just like to talk, you know, talk it out. And I feel um, like girls I've dated, you know, in the past, like they they shut down, they don't talk, and like it could be nothing to do with you. But like, fuck, she hates me today, you know. Yeah. But it's got and like, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> like fuck, I like, just just talk, you know. Like, and it, it changes the fucking world for you. If you just talk, and but that it have seems to be a thing. Pointed out that I have a husky voice. Your thing. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. from a three big day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've uh, been told it's sexy as well, so yeah, I'm just going to own it. That's what she said. Oh, I've got a husky voice. I said, come mm. on the show. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so people aren't communicating anymore. And I've, I've known, like I have had, um, well, shit's fall apart. Purely on, I just didn't know how to communicate. And, and ghosting. Like, what the fuck is ghosting, ladies? The, the blokes Men do it too. No, right? they do not. They do. Just ghost. Uh, that's actually, let's touch this base. That's what hurts me the most. Please Ghosting. don't ghost me. Yeah. 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 Like, I'd, I'd uh, flat out just say, look, if I have not your cup of tea or you just don't feel, just tell me straight up. All good. Be accountable. Just yeah. be responsible. It doesn't take much to communicate and hold space for someone, whether it is your friend or it isn't. 
it, if you're an unconditional loving person and you have that much love for yourself, um, please honor the person that you've just had this or shared an experience with. 100%. And um, share communication and open space to healing and love and light because it's really easy to walk away from something l without looking back and suppressing all your emotions. But guess what? That's not going to help you move forward in life either. You're yeah. only going to keep attracting the same issues and problems and you're not going to actually deal or work with it and you're not going to attract the people on the same level. So if you continue to shut down and just walk away from a relationship and not honor that person, not have this parting way of, hey, much love here. Let's talk about this. This yeah. hurt me. That hurt me. Let's address it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so, yeah. And then maybe we can share some healing people from this. People really need to realize what they are doing to people mentally. Like when I, um, like I, I was dating a girl. <laughs> I met a girl not long after I um, separated yeah, from my wife. And like, fucking hell, I thought, that was, I think it was the first time I've ever experienced like love at first sight. I was just in awe of this girl. And um, se it. six, seven years old, we're still doing this fucking tiptoe roller coaster around each other. We're just... We just can't seem to get our shit together, but we still got this thing. Oh, no, it's fucking weird. Um, but she is a serial ghoster. Like, bad. And how many times have you gone back there? Oh, too many. <laughs> I've lost count. I've so lost who's count. hurting who? Oh, I, I, I fucking hurt myself. I'm an idiot. <laughs> but, like... But you like it, too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I hate it. I oh, hate I it. Like, it. And, like, the, the sick feeling it puts in someone when you're just ghosted and you got no answers you got no idea what you've done like you you go through and you scroll back through all the fucking messages but you're just laughing in the last message and then nothing like it's and then three months later oh look i'm really sorry i'll just go on through some stuff like fuck off fuck off talk. talk just say it you know like that it's cruel there's no other fucking word for ghosting than it's know. fucking cruel i know and i had one at May I share? I also fell in love very much the same. It was love at first sight. Oh shit, we just lost the GoPro. What did that say? It's not, I Can couldn't you read, that? read that. That was too far. You can't read that. It was too far away. Oh. It was a glimpse. Not, not hooking up with you, you got shit eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pass me my phone now. We've got a heap of bloody comments, do we? Oh, we got so many people. Live. What are we, what are we, what are we <laughs> not on mine. <laughs> what are we talking about here? I got I got text messages from Jewelry Dress coming in. I hope she's not. Oh, what do we got? What are people asking? What is watching? Don't ghost to anyone. It's not nice or respectful. Yeah, it's not nice or respectful. It's right. It's, it's, a, it's a massive disrespect to be ghosting. Uh, yeah, I mean. She sounds this. like they have a cough. Have a cough, darling. <laughs> have a cough. Get going, you got this. Oh, fuck, we've got comments here for days, party people. All right, we'll put that back over there and let's keep going. Keep going? Um, Since we've got so many people interested, are they are they interested in what we're talking about is what I wonder. Oh, shit, yeah, that will be. <laughs> All these cameras. So, yeah, it's, mm, this it's is... It's not my good side, but I don't care. This is my first time. <laughs> <laughs> I was a virgin before today, but... I still am. <laughs> and I'm just going to interrupt this episode, guys, to let you guys know that... At checkout on the aemanstore.com. If you put in Blind Man Dan as the code, bang, 10% off. Fellas, go and check it out, aemanstore.com. Make yourself look beautiful in a fucking rugged man kind of way. Hello. We look alright, don't we? <laughs> this, could be, this could be like love and would making we, on a podcast. Would we make a good match, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> comment, comment below. <laughs> comment below. <laughs> Get the chick a lozenge. <laughs> I uh, told him my voice would be husky, pero si quieren les puedo hablar en español. ¿Prefieren eso? What? Con mucho gusto se los digo. Speak English, you fucking lunatic. <laughs> see, see, see how, see how Australians compliment you? I didn't compliment you. I told you to talk English, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Speak English, you fucking idiot. That yeah. is just a... Uh, I mean, you're so... That was autocorrect. That meant, God, you're beautiful. Keep so, talking. So, you know that that thing we were talking about? Put this big black thing in front of your face. I reckon this whole thing about beaming, keep them keen. Australian quote. Motto, that's fucking stupid. That's bullshit. Oh, I don't want to talk about that's that. That's fucking bullshit. All right. Don't be mean and keep them keen. Because if those are the girls you're trying to attract in your life, well, then go for it. Yeah. They're the... They're the gold diggers. They're the yeah. <laughs> I want to. I want to touch on that. So, you know, like yeah. So, for example, I got that girl's number that part there. That's right in my face. I, that's <laughs> where you gotta put it. <laughs> you can do it like that. Okay, it's got to stand. Okay, um, that's better. I like this better. 
I look better in this light. Um, so, you know, like you like I got the girl's number at the park the other day there, um, and people go, oh, don't text straight away. You know, wait a couple of days to text. All that sort of shit. Oh, I reckon, fuck that. You want to talk to someone, you fucking talk to them. Yeah. So I just text her, how soon is too soon to talk to the girl at the park? And she replied, <laughs> and she replied back like straight away, well, t- never too soon, you know? And we got chatting away. But people do play these games where let's drag this out. Let's, let's, why? Why the fuck do it? Very good question. Um, and do you think it's a turn off if, if he does text straight away? Personally? Personally, I'm like you. I don't like games. I'd very much be straight yeah. and front, up front about it. But then there's this whole thing I also struggle with. It's like, oh, well, the man's meant to make the first move or engage. So I feel as a woman, even though sometimes you want to be the first one to open communication or engage or send a text, that even that plays on your head because you're like, wait a second. <laughs> so you, you, you do think about <laughs> this sort of stuff, do you? Yeah? Send the message first. It's but not. do you think that? Do you think the guy should send the first message? It's, it's not that. It's sometimes you're like, well, if I, I if I initiate conversation, he's gonna look at it as though I'm the one chasing. And nah, sometimes, see, I don't think. I don't agree. You know? All yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't agree. I don't know. But everyone's got a different different idea on this. Like I hear all sorts of, oh, that text back, and then like, oh, she texts back. Don't wait. Don't text back right now. Like, fuck off. I just, I want to talk to the chick. I've got to talk to her. Yeah, just text her. I yeah. reckon. The more, the more you put effort into something, yeah. the more the, you realise. In saying that, I do think I may have ruined it with Park Girl. With I what? Think with, with Park Girl, I think I may have ruined it. Oh, there's names I think, for them now? I think I may have. To, oh, I, don't <laughs> I don't want to say her name out loud. You know, protect her for the innocent. Um... <laughs> I think I might have text too much. I'm just a fucking idiot. I gotta just talk dumb uh, shit. What do, what do you guys think? Do you text or not text? Tell us. <laughs> Tell us. Tell more. us, party people. <laughs> well, that phone's gone for that. Is anyone commenting? What's that say? Do it. <laughs> so do it, Dan. She can only say no, mate. That's right. <laughs> Send it. And guys, actually, fellas, if you're watching or listening. You know, make an effort. Confidence, effort is sexy. confidence <laughs> is very yeah. Effort and confidence is is very attractive. So, you know, if you don't think you're the fucking good looking bloke or whatever, just just fucking honestly go up. If you're at Woolworths and you see a good looking chick, fucking send it. Now, is everything about looks though? Hey. Yeah, no, look like if you if you <laughs> someone catches your eye, don't fucking pass a moment up. Yeah. You know. Make it, yeah. Just fucking send it. Say something. And don't say something stupid either. Start with something nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you I'll give you an example actually. The other <laughs> the, the other week there, um, I've been hearing nonstop that my niece has got this good looking teacher. Oh, she's so pretty. Um, Paige's teacher's so pretty. You know, I was like, I have to meet this teacher. Anyway, I stayed there for like last two weeks, and I was like, I've kept missing the school drop offs. Anyway, on the last day I was there, I was like, I'm gonna go to drop off. <laughs> anyway, I went. I said, I'm gonna go to pick up. So I went to pick up my niece, and I said, hey, darling, she comes out. I said, introduce me to your teacher. No, let's go. Introduce me to your teacher. <laughs> she goes, okay. <laughs> Let me open up. And I said, hey, you going? Oh, I got a bit of a chin wag. I said, so, is the prettiest teacher in the world available? Oh, I'm actually engaged. Oh, he's a lucky man. You know, it's all good. <laughs> uh, we had a laugh about it, and I walked away. And like, my mate's like, you're a fucking idiot. you got no shame. I said, mate, what if she said, no, I'm, I'm actually available. And then I said, well, would you like to go? That's not, and it all fucking... You know, exploded. And then your daughter was getting fucking straight A's because I was banging the teacher. You know? It could have worked out. Could have. Well, you know? You got could've, nothing to lose. You know? yeah. <laughs> but can't confirm it didn't. It didn't how, work out. How many doc- How many um, doors are you knocking on at once, though? Doors at once? There's <laughs> yeah. only one teacher a day. <laughs> I've only got one of these. I can't just keep going to school drop-offs every day. Ah, <laughs> uh, boys. Boys. <laughs> No, oh, shit. No, what's that here? Awesome. Cancelled. Bit. So it says, the feeling of rejection is real, so that scares me from texting. And I think we, we all get a little bit of that fear, but I reckon own that fear. <laughs> I do, like, I do agree, like, with, like, texting and, and getting nothing back, like, it can be like, a, oh, fuck, it's, it can be a real sick feeling. Ricky says, text if you're interested. If you're interested, if someone's interested, then you'll know exactly. Cor- That's called reciprocation. Mm. <laughs> it's time that as humans we start to 
energetically reciprocate with one another. So personally for me, I don't even want any friends if they don't want to reciprocate energetically. 100%. Um, yeah. It's all about like giving and receiving. Yeah. If you're continuously giving, especially in a relationship, um, and you're the one pouring your heart out and the other person's only meeting you on this level. Yeah. Um, you're eventually going to feel energetically depleted. You're no longer want to love yourself, let alone the other person. <laughs> like, yeah. um, and that's the thing about energy and reciprocation. It's very important to share that with someone that is actually sharing with you. Otherwise, ultimately, you're going to run yourself dry and there's no effort f coming from that person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right, so what about, we should talk about, what's the perfect profile on Tinder? <laughs> oh, Dad, apparently I'm flirting with you. Is she flirting with me? Uh, that's what they reckon. Oh, she's only human, guys. <laughs> See, confidence is attractive. <laughs> he's just admitting how many girls he's, he's trying to I have not admit, I'm just telling you <laughs> that if you see someone who catches eyes, say get A. Like, fuck it, why not? I'm still waiting for him to invite me out on a real date. <laughs> I have invited you out. On endless days. <laughs> this is another actual one that's a bit of a ghoster. I'm not a ghoster, just a... <laughs> Whatever, Casper. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on, I'm getting... Uh, I'm getting you have lots of messages. Yeah, You're a very popular man. <laughs> messages from the ex-wife. It's about my babies. I've got to check. It's about the babies. Yeah, you got to check your babies. Sorry to interrupt the thrilling episode, guys, but I've got to give a bit of a shout-out to stickermafia.com.au. Now, everyone loves my hashtag stickers, the Blind Man Dan hashtag stickers. And I'm always getting asked, Dan, how can I get stickers like that made for myself? I've got an idea. I want a sticker made. Righto, now you can. Jump on stickermafia.com.au, design your own sticker, bang, and post it out to you. Bob's a sister from another mister. Oh, my babies are doing a fundraiser. Little darlings. That's what are uh, they fundraising for? Fuck if I know, but they're going to nail it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, um, I did a... That's a supportive daddy. <laughs> oh, I, I like writing. I did a um, good mate of mine, his, his little boy, raised money um, a fair few years. But we'll get me back 10 years now. He raised money for rare cancers. His mother, his grandmother passed away from rare cancer, uh, tongue cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he wanted to raise money for rare cancers and he had a mullet. Like, this kid was only nine years old. And it was, this mullet was a work of art. Fucking beautiful. <laughs> and um, he goes, oh, I'll shave my mullet if I raise, um, he wanted to raise like $1,000. I said, oh, mate, little buddy, <laughs> we're going to get more than $1,000. So I wrote him this spiel, this comedy story. Yeah. And it fucking went viral. Newspapers grabbed it. Radios grabbed it. It went nuts. He ended up doing nine grand. Awesome. Yeah, it was that's fucking amazing. deadly. So that's what I'll do for my kids now. <laughs> I'll, write, I'll write them something funny and uh, get the go viral. That's exciting. I'm all about, yeah, empowering other people and doing doing that. What have we got here, guys? What are the messages? Let's see what else the comments say. Travel Australia on a lawnmower. Oh, yeah. no, oh, okay. Would you, all right. I do know the guy that travels around Australia with the lawnmower. I don't know if you know him, but he does fundraising. Really? And he's fundraised over two No, that's not that's bloody he's not a he's on a tractor. Dollars. He's on a tractor, not a lawnmower. It's, a lawnmower, it's not a fucking lawnmower. You're talking about bloody uh, you know Jackaroo. No. Huh? There's a guy I've met him in Burley and Byron Bay and all the places and he walks around really? with a lawnmower. Up and a rider down. mower. No. A push mower. A push mower. Oh yeah, right. And he's in his no, like yeah, Is he mowing or is this pushing it he's mowing jesus see he's, he's changing the world up and down the one bite of grass at a time and he's he's done over two million dollars sure thank him i'm planning a trip guys oh, on the johnny to time. mission beach if that video i've done gets a thousand shares i'll drive the uh, mower through the three towns it takes to get through to mission beach so is that right start sharing that one and you what know girl are you gonna bring with you oh you know probably a fucking school teacher <laughs> Cause I, you know why I'd pick a teacher? Why? Because she's got a lot of class. Ah, interesting. You didn't get my fucking joke, <laughs> did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> you will acknowledge my joke. <laughs> One minute late, but I got it. Yeah. All right, um, now I'll put a little trailer on the back. If you want to jump in, we can do a podcast on the road. <laughs> I am blonde, did you realize? I don't date blonde girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, you dated some Muppets. 
Uh, okay, yeah. okay, I was a cat dog. So, so what attracts you? Are the smart ones, the pretty ones, the sense of humor. Dirty ones. No, <laughs> no, no, no. honestly, honestly, se- the classy ones. Yeah, one. sense of humor. <laughs> if you can banter and just have a sense of humor, I'm fucking hooked. I love it. I, I love too hard and get nothing back. You're not alone, there, boy. <sighs> we love lovers, passionate lovers. We're talking, sorry guys that actually aren't watching the live right now and you're listening <laughs> to this in your truck. Um, we got the live going, so Dash is reading out the comments and we're talking about them. Oh, so some people are only got us on audio. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, once this goes live on the uh, on the Blind Man Dan podcast on Spotify, Apple, and all other networks. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, did I mention I got a size nine? So you, you gotta teach me the ropes. Yeah, Roger. And I got a thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my favorite Oi. number is thirteen. <laughs> my last guest, Jillary Jess, has got huge feet. Well, she is packing. <laughs> <laughs> She's got long ass toes. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got going on here? Hey, from your poon. Hey, your poon. I did. I spent some time in your poon when Cyclone Marcy came in and messed it all up for you. That was the last excavator job I'd done. See, what I'm getting is you have a lot of ladies commenting. No, oh, they're all <laughs> blokes. <laughs> no, they're mostly ladies. No, oh, they're not. <laughs> hey, Dan from Rockhampton. Hello. I got a lot of... I could show you my stats and it's all blokes. Blokes on blokes. Blind man. Can you so what have we we've touched on so far? Can you read that one What's please? it saying? <laughs> Blind man Dan, can you see how hot she is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not ugly. <laughs> I wouldn't kick her out of bed if she farted. <laughs> Jeez, Aussies have this way. Hey, we're flirting. fucking smooth, oh eh? Oh my god, you guys are so hey, smooth. Like cream, cream cheese on a bagel. You oh, bastards. you're making me blush, I tell you. <laughs> no, that's, you sure that's not the. Um, What'd you call I it? I think it's a sunset. Your sunset hour. It's a sunset hour. We had to get perfect lighting for Dash for a sunset it's hour. It's a twilight race here That's in Early it. Beach. We're just sitting on the veranda yeah. in the podcast Did you just room. say veranda? Veranda. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, balcony? It's veranda. V, not ba. I said veranda. You said veranda. It's the same <laughs> difference. <laughs> oh. You say tomatoes, I'll say tomatoes. So attracted. <laughs> <laughs> Pero si queremos podemos hablar en español, ¿no? Stop it. I don't know what that is, but I liked it. What did you say? Lulu reckons you're cool as fuck even if you can't see it. <laughs> Thanks, Lulu. <laughs> Appreciate it. Oh, feel that stiff breeze. Oi, big tit Dan, says Whitley. Hey, big tit Dan. <laughs> Does that Ryan? Ryan's always up me about my boobs. I got all the slang. Here. Oh, mate. Motorboat Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting these. These are getting. Well, obviously, it's a inside joke. I yeah, these know. are getting. I don't know about Listen, you are, you are getting a bit silly <laughs> here, guys. You know, let's get some let's get some real content for the truck drivers listening. People in the diggers, you fucking. Yeah, right get, here get a month. Oh, guys. Actually, I just got a um, I just got a sample through from. The supplier for the um, the yeah no yeah hat. Oh, they fucking nailed it. It looks so good. Uh, so, ladies, I'm gonna put the um, oh shit, that's a long one. Dash, what's that all about? I'll, I'll read that one for you. Yeah, right. So, I'm gonna put the ladies one up for pre-order soon, guys. So, I've done a um, couple of different colours there for you, ladies, and it's got the ponytail hole in it too. So, so I oh, listen. I'm gonna listen to what the ladies want. Dash, they want they want bloody ponytail holes. Oh, and in, they, in their hats. If they want a ponytail hole, I'll give them a ponytail hole. Do you want to know what I want? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What, you, what? Oh. I want a sailor's hat. Well, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that ponytail <sighs> hole will come in handy. You want a, po- a sailor's hat with a ponytail hole? Because when I go sailing, I lose all my hats. Oh, true. Well, you, you can know? put your ponytail through it and you won't lose it. Exactly. You're just pretty much attached to your head. That's why it makes sense. Yeah, you know? I know. Copy. You know, it's funny. Like, I look in this uh, screen here. So I can't see you. This is when we're peripheral fucked. I can't see you. Like, i got to really look, and it's pretty dark now, so you're not. But look in there, and I can see you clear as day, and I can see you looking at me. Oh, shit, my phone went flat. Sorry, <laughs> guys. <laughs> you have to watch on darters. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, you should have saved that video. It'll save. It will? Yeah, it'll be there. It'll be there for life. I'll be, be there for 30 days, is. and then 
Facebook move it along. So we're well, still we're gonna do a recap. What have we talked about so far? So uh, ghosting, don't fucking ghost, ladies, blokes, don't do it. It's cruel, fucking cruel. Um, be up front, be honest, and look, if they're not gonna leave you alone off that, then block the cunts, then block them, fucking oath. Don't call them that, please. I'll talk about blokes. Hey, 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 hey. I'll talk about the dudes, not the chicks. This is my one, my one for Australia. Don't call a girl. Cunt. I didn't call the girl. <laughs> cunt. I was talking about the chicks. Because there's some fucking lunatic dudes out there that go yeah, nuts. Um, but no, sweethearts. <laughs> <laughs> then Beautiful you can, woman. Blokes, then you, can, then you can block Dallas. the darlings. Um, and then what else was there? Um, unconditional love. Unconditional love. I don't think love means what it is anymore. And I think, you know. Refine it for yourself. Yeah. Don't, like, thr- don't, don't, don't be a part of this new age dating in the yeah. sense of. Don't be a surface level fuckwit. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. do better, be better. Yeah. Like, another, another thing I want to talk for the blokes actually is uh, if you're going to take on a lady um, that has children, don't don't take on that lady like you're just going to be there for six months and fuck off. Like, don't do that. Um, I don't like how I operate. Like, if I take on a girl, kids, I will. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in, and I'll raise that child like it's my own. Wow, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, it, it's it's hurtful. Like, if you're don't fuck around a single mum, you know. Um, yeah. It's don't do that. Don't do that. Because, like, even... And it's hard. Like, it is hard. Like, if, when I've dated women with children and we split, you're not just losing her, you're losing the kids as well. But just don't go there in the first place. If kids aren't what you want or, you know, you're just there for a bit of fun, don't don't go for the single mum. Yeah. So, it's not... Make it's, an effort. It's yeah. time for us as humans in general to start making an effort for others rather than... Putting everything under the rug yep. and making everything surface level. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it just Built. comes to why we're so materialistically driven, yeah. or how come people are jumping on OnlyFans is because they're feeling so disconnected from connecting with someone, from feeling like they c- are communicating, they're being heard, they're being listened to, yeah. empowered. Or ultimately even just seen. So it's not hard to see someone. So when you're with someone, my advice is stay present. Yeah. There's so much going on in the world right now. But when someone's giving us our, their time and space and their love, like, reciprocate. It's not that hard. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. What else was there? Um, Tinder. Tinder. Let's, let's, let's try and get away. From, from the dating the app, guys, and go on, go and talk to her or ladies, go and talk to him. You've seen him at a park, you see him at the shop, you see him at the pub. You communication. Just go on, yeah, communication. Just go and talk. Go, give it a crack. Honestly, the worst I can say is no. Um, and you're going to have more luck doing that than you are on a dating site, and that's fucking truth. It's all yeah. about communicating. The more relationships become discardable, and the more mm-hmm. we can go through people. Yeah. That's what I love about Early. Can I yeah. be honest? Yeah. Is early such a small town that you can't fuck people around? Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. it comes back yeah. and bites you yeah. in the ass. Your rep, so your rep be ruined in no time. Such a small town that yeah. it's karma. So if you're going around fucking trying to like piss everyone off or, or like it ultimately comes back around. And what I realized, like, for example, in the Gold Coast, it's become more and more of a city where people are like, Oh, yeah, I know you, but I can walk right past you and pretend I don't know you and not say hi. Yeah. Right? Is that what, really? They do yeah. That? yeah sure. And it used to not be like that, but the yeah. more it's becoming bigger and more of a city, the more people Just pretend don't, you're not there. don't take accountability for the shit they've yeah. done. <laughs> and they can walk straight past you and pretend they haven't done that. Or I, so I will always try and leave a relationship. Um, on, on a good note, you know, or amicable at the end of it. You know, you don't have to continue on to talk and all that or nothing like that. It's not, yeah. not that way. But if you did happen to pass them in the street, you could smile. You could say, hello, how are you going? How's everything going? And, and continue on. Um, that's how I've, I've, that's pretty much how I've exited nearly every relationship, I reckon. Yeah. Or just a friend. Like, that's exactly right. Mm. Like, we once we've known someone, unless we've <laughs> really disconnected and, and blocked them out of our lives, yeah. there's no reason to ignore or avoid no, people. No, like we, no. We, I think that's our, the biggest hurt feeling for me is to feel abandoned and yeah. kind of ghosted, what we were saying. Yeah. And like there's nothing worse than being seen 
being touched or being in that place and then all of a sudden gone not being seen yeah. not being heard when, yeah. when you've gone out of your way to put all this time energy and attention it's got it's got wrenching laws yeah. so that's hurt me recently <laughs> oh but who I'll, was he i'll get over it i'll probably end up single for another three years i'll, I'll, I'll fuck him up <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe that day won't be so bad. And then <laughs> yeah, you'd be right. We'll, we'll Give go, me hope again. We'll go out on a date now and it'll be oh, the best one you've ever had. <laughs> I hope so. I'll, I'll even pay. <laughs> Old school. Well, yeah. what's a gentleman? Oh, you know, that's nothing too. Chicks chicks are on a, on a mission now to pay for themselves. And, um, to be independent. Yeah, and like I, I admire that. That's great. But I'm old school and I'll pay. But I was actually talking to my god sister there a few weeks ago and... She's been on a couple of days now, Tinder dates, and they paid, and they have gone fair out and just said at the end of it, right, I paid, so now you got to put out. Like, blunt as fuck. That's right. That's fucking terrible. That's so, why, she, that's so now she's like, I oh, will never let another bloke pay for me. <coughs> like, fucking hell, lads. You, you know, there's some fucking idiots out there ruining it for us, eh? Hey? And you know, that, that, <coughs> that actually has been going on for years, because my dad, when I was only 11 or 12 years old, would take me aside and be like, don't ever let anyone pay for your whole meal. Yeah. He said you always offer to pay or you pay for dessert so that they don't expect anything from you. Yeah, yeah. But it's pretty sad that, That's fucked. that shouldn't, people shouldn't have to think can like that. think that they're entitled yeah. to you or something yeah, about terrible. you because... They financially have that's, given that's something up. to that you. That's terrible. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm finding is that it's quite an interesting world um, in Latin America where people are very poor. Yeah. Um, the men will still go out of their way to pay. To pay. But it's more of a, like, this is, I want to showcase to you. Yeah, yeah. You know, this yeah. is what I have. It doesn't... And as a woman, you you feel very grateful and appreciated to have that, but you don't need that. You don't yeah. require that. Yeah. Like you can be very much self sufficient. I'm the type of person that, oh, you pay for a meal this day, I'm happy to pay for a meal down the track. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. a tip for tat kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've been in a relationship where I've, I've sort of I've allowed that once you start dating. But and it is nice when the first date oh, someone makes yeah, an effort. This, right? this is it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I know I've I've actually I've had to be a bit strategic with with on days before where you know like you're a couple of dates in and they're they're insistent on they want to pay, so I'll go up and I'll see the people like I'll go get a drink or something and I'll say here's my card when it comes time to pay and just take it yeah and I'll go up and like oh no it's all done yeah ah. fuck you do that ah. <laughs> yeah. gotta be stu- gotta be yeah it's sweet strategic uh, strategic like little strategic dating in. with Dan. I think we're going all black and dark now. Yeah, let's get it, it down there. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in on the live. Uh, fellas in the cabs and the ladies in the cabs. Sorry, just a bit um, bit of the shop. But I hope you have a uh, cracking rest of your week or night or whatever you're doing. Stay tuned for the uh, next episode of the Blind Man Dan podcast. We've got some And I'm excited for the, this dinner day. I'll tell you all about it. Yeah, and we'll, <laughs> we'll tune back in. We'll do episode two with Dasha. Will- How was your date with Dan? <laughs> And for those of you who have, haven't met me before, I'm Darsha, Darsha Sai on Instagram. Go so, and give her a follow, guys. So yeah. you'll see a, you'll see a tagged in all the stuff I'm doing. So give her a like, give her a follow. I'd love to be doing more of what Dan's doing, which is sharing the love and light around yeah. Australia. So if you want to be my friend, come in, check out my page and see what I talk about. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> what do you talk about? <laughs> There seems to be lots of colours on her page. Uh, spirituality. Very spiritual colours and stuff. Um, revolution. Yeah, well conspiracies. Well, I like chalk and cheese, but I like it so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, my opposite subtract, right? That's <laughs> it. That's it. Let's, all right, party people. We'll talk Much to you soon. Love. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, thanks, Dash. Bye.